How does the cost of living compare between the Philippines, the UK and Spain? First thing I want to talk about is the UK. The UK costs me £1,500 a month minimum. That £1,500 is basic living. This is um, normal household food. Uh, this is maybe having a odd Friday night curry or something, but it is not living the high life. Um, the cost of living in the UK he is getting stupid. Um, that's the only way I can describe it. Uh, now, access to work is much easier in the UK, but I would recommend doing the way I do, which is basically just commute and do contracting. Um, you can be far better off, have a better standard of living, and you're not owned by anybody. Now, Spain comes in at about £703, uh, which is €1,000 at the moment. €1,000 pays for all your bills, a two-bedroom apartment like this, and your your food etc the food quality is much better here as well the uk's lost it it's, it's got i mean i'll be honest with you i was shocked when i went back to the uk after being in the philippines for a few years tesco's more like iceland it's all frozen food and it's all horrible stuff i like fresh food and i could see why tesco's was losing its business because it was it's just crap. It's the same when you get a chicken, it's full of water and nonsense like that. Here we can get a fresh chicken cheaper than it is in the UK and it's on the old rotisserie, it's ready, it's cooked, it's ready to go. You, you know, there's something badly wrong in the UK. Everything's costing too much. Um, but the cost of living in Spain is about a thousand. Now, a thousand euros could be reduced. Now, one of the things I will say is we're one minute from the beach. One of the other things I will say is that thousand euros is the absolute minimum, and that's for a family of four. If I was living here on my own or living with my wife, I could reduce that considerably more. Um, because a two bedroom apartment is about 300 euros, a studio apartment's about 200 to 250, all inclusive. So you've got no bills whatsoever. So, but I've got, on this one, I've got electric and water. So you can see there is ways to save money if you're a single. The next thing I would say is if you went self-employed or work for somebody else, you then get entitlements for free health care because you're paying into the social security system, which can be a saving because per person it can be 30 euros a month. As we're going resident and looking at the self-employment, etc., we have the Spanish healthcare system because we're getting into the system because we're going to be here long term. So we have that healthcare because we sit between the two because we don't have EHIC, which is European healthcare cover because we're not tourists, we're aiming to be residents. So they do a temporary SIP card, um, which is the SIP card is basically your Spanish healthcare, which would be one of your big expenses if you weren't um, working. That's why some of these retirement people go home because that, that can be two, up to 280 euros a month, I think, for self-employment. Sounds a lot, but I would say you're still paying a lot more in the UK or already have done. Um, in Spain, it's a bit like, I'll move that to one side because it's quite complicated. Um, now, getting on to the Philippines. The Philippines, our bare minimum cost is 20,000 pesos a month. Bear in mind, we own our own property in the Philippines, which is quite a good thing for us, but also in a context way, it helps you because if you add that cost of wherever it is you're going, uh, because Minglanilia, electric's cheaper, rentals are cheaper, etc., etc., living in Cebu City. The electric goes, electric cost goes up, rents go up. Makati, electric gets horrendous. Uh, cost of rents are horrendous, etc., etc. But for a general provincial life, it costs about twenty thousand pesos a month. That's about uh, about three hundred pounds a month, something like that. Um, now, five thousand pesos of that is actually the education for the two kids. That's how much we pay for the schooling uh, at a local school. Um, the rest is basic living, our groceries, electric and water. We have no rental cost. So 
these will give you a comparison on the differences on the countries. Now, one of the things I will say is you can adapt up, up or down scale on any of these. What I like about Spain and the Philippines is it's a lot more flexible. The UK, rent are horrendous. You know, basic cost of living is just stupid. It, it really is. For a single person, it's very, very hard. And it's why there's a lot of people that want to get divorced, etc., who can't because they can't afford to get rid of their other partner. They can't afford to get a new home on their own. They can't afford to split what's owing on the debt of the mortgage. They can't afford to get apart. Um, Philippines and Spain, you could do everything's doable yes you've got to go oh yeah but work 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 if making 300 pounds a month to live on in the philippines come on i'm sure anybody could do that it's easy to do online um spain there is a, there's work about it. you've just got to look for it it's not easy to find but if i wanted to work in a call center for a basic pay there is plenty of call centers around. You just got to watch these people, though, and make sure they pay your social security and stuff because that's what gets you your health care. And if you want to go resident, that's what you need. You need to be paying tax in the system for them to recognize that you're a good citizen. Um, but there is work there. There's lots of call centers around here that are always crying out for people to do telemarketing and um, PPI and all the other horrible stuff people call you about. But beyond that, there's waitering, there's jobbing, building, there's all bit, there's bits and pieces around. Because I'll be honest, the majority of people are old here, so they always need something doing. They don't have a lot of money, but fixing somebody's laptop, you might get like, oh, well, 20 euros. And then that guy knows about 50 other people and then suddenly you've got people asking can you sort their wi-fi out can you f sort their dvd player their smart tv all these sorts of bits and pieces around the houses there is always plenty of stuff to potter around with and like i said you've only got to find a thousand euros less than 750 a uh, thousand euros less than 750 quid or do what I do, just go to the UK and work a few months of the year and then just go back to Spain and sit down, go back to the Philippines. This is why it's doable, it's possible. Um, and I just want to show these comparisons because when you sit and look at the figures that way, it makes it more achievable. Because I know some people say, oh, I'm a bit worried about making the leap from here to there. But you can do a transition. You can go, right, how much is it really going to cost me to live in the Philippines? How much is it really going to cost me to live in Spain? And then sit there and go, right, this is how much I need to make a month. How am I going to do that outside of my daily job? Maybe I've got some skills that I can utilize, like teaching English. Or maybe you only need four months' work a year to actually be on target. And then you can do this. Or maybe you can work remotely with the same company you're working for and agree to a pay, pay cut to make it lucrative for the business. There is always a solution if you look for it or create it. That's what companies forget. The, the company I left was quite, quite nasty uh, towards the end. Um, and I was actually trying to help them fix their business. But the, the, the thing with them is they assume they own you. They assume, well, this is the you know narrow way of thinking. But here I am, I'm sitting here looking at things like the Raspberry Pi. I've got software development and other bits and pieces that are now going to bear fruit in that same industry. It's got nothing to do with them whatsoever because I haven't even started the projects yet. The, the one for the software, for example, the first one is already in process. Like I said, the guys disappeared. But all these bits and pieces add up. You know, if you're getting, this is why I said, somebody didn't get my video a while back about, um, what did I call it? Making money out of nothing. And he didn't get the video. He couldn't understand it. It just sounded like, if I, you know, in his view, it, I was just talking gibberish and it was just stupid. Um, but like these YouTube videos, um, it's money out of nothing. I'm sat here, I've done this video, and once it's on the internet, it'll sit there for the next decade, and all these videos make money. Um, funny enough, some of the f 
weirdest things like a carabao has thousands of hits on youtube i don't know why i don't know if it's kids viewing for school or whatever it doesn't matter they they all carry advertisement so these are things that make money out of nothing and this is the thing when you sit and go right that's my budget this is what i want to hit this is what i want to achieve you can start focusing on making it happen and i will say that youtube will run and run uh, because it's the transition period between the blogs and text into what's now the youtube generation um but youtube is only a step away from the next um i am not sure what that transition will be maybe more live live feeds more live interaction etc uh but we're still not there yet but either way the, if you start today you can start planning making your leap into your new future getting the life you want rather than what people tell you you should have um I think that's what scared the company that I was working with is the fact is they have no control over me um, because I'll do what I'm requested to do work-wise, but I will not let them interfere in my life. I will not let them interfere in family life, my our work, contracted hours, etc., etc. But beyond that, I'm not owned by the company. Um, and I think if more people did that, we'd be doing the world a favor. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yeah.